welcome to this demo that I'm going to do of the Strezov Sampling Creative Toolbox. Two drum kits, one electronic, and uh, multiple acoustic kits in one, one patch, which is very nice, and a percussion section. Lots to talk about, so let's get into it. So, the first kit that we come to is drum machines. And this is NKS as well, it's very nice, uh, and I like it a great deal, and I think you will too. So if I just play the kit, I'll show you the layout first. So um, I've shifted my keyboard down as I always do. I'm in, uh, you play an S61 keyboard, so I always play my drums uh, second octave up. So if I just show you the keys in, on this particular preset anyway, start here with the bass drum on C2. All right, nothing on the E. Toms, hi-hat, tom, hi-hat, tom, open, shake, nothing, cymbal, nothing, um, cowbell, and clave. And that's the lot. So it's an 808 kind of thing, and uh, it's pretty standard stuff. Fair. So the first thing we'll get to is the NKS mapping on this particular kit. So we have the Alt kit, which is currently set to off, and if I turn it on, it turns into what I believe is like a 606 type thing. So the mapping is slightly different. There are fewer sounds here. There's only two of the toms instead of three of the toms. Um, they're in the same places and everything is where it should be, uh, but there's none of the aux percussion here. So you just get the symbol and that's the last kit. Next to that is a thing that says FX kit currently set off and then nothing uh, on knobs three and four, knob five, six, seven and eight, all empty, at least on page one. So what I'll do is turn on the FX kit while playing and we get this kind of very affected, dirty sounding 606 kit, which could be quite fun. And if I then turn off the alt kit, and we go back to the 808, it's an affected kit now. So you can have a lot of fun with that. And if I turn off the affected kit, now it's off and it's back to normal. All right, so let's move over to page two where we have kick related items. So the first thing on page uh, two is the volume, which, uh, which is uh, currently, I've moved it a bit, minus 0.1 dB, then pitch. So I can move it up and down, move it around. Pan center, off to the left, off to the right. There's your channel check for the day. If your speakers are the wrong way around, Please fix them. Re reverb send. I nearly said reverse send because rev, I think, of reverse. It's reverb send. And then the stereo width, which doesn't make too much of a difference here anyway. It's mono. And I think the pan is slightly off. Let me try and put it back to center a little bit. Okay. It's good for now. And then we have something that just keeps saying off. Ah, okay, the alt kit switch. So you, basically what you can have is you can have the um, the affected kit or the alternative kit for each individual kit element. So if you wanted the 606 kit with an 808 snare, 808 snare and 808 kick, switch. It's quite fun. And the affected kick, but with everything else normal. Now the 606 affected kick and um, changed kit as well. So lots of fun there. The snare is the same, volume, pitch. So if you want it to match something, you can do that. Panning, reverb send, stereo width, and kit switch. Then we have 808 kick and uh, hi-hats and everything, but with the 606 snare. FX switch. And yeah. Clap. Same again. And let's see. Yeah, so we can have that clap. It's quite a richer clap, isn't it? Affected clap. Quite 
fun, really. And hi-hat. Same thing again. Volume. Pitch. Now it's a bit higher than normal. I'm moving it over to the left a bit. Uh, just for something different to do. And I'll probably go back and move the clap. Let's have the 606 hi-hat. Um, and affect it as well. And let's go move the clap over to there. So now... Actually, the hi-hat's now a bit low, so I want you to turn it up. Even though it's 2.5 dB, let's crank it to 10. Okay, 8.4. So you can have a lot of fun, really. All right, low tom. So th th there's one thing with this in that the um, the mapping for NKS only takes into account low tom and high tom, which I think is only for the 606, but uh, the 808 kit has three toms. But it's okay because the these two toms are shared. So if I move them over, you can hear that these two are an octave apart, but they're shared on the e, on the F and the G, which is fine anyway. And then, what have we got here? Pan, pitch, sorry. Why don't I make the highest tom match the other highest tom? So now, now we have a totally different sound. Very silly. Hi, Tom. Now, same again as always. So, I want you to stick the pan over here just for a bit of a. Ah, oh, lots of fun. Then we move over to the symbols uh, and we can pan it, put it over there. And why don't we take the pitch down to some silly amount for a change? So, it's a really low symbol over there. So now it's quite a sort of um, crunchy kit with all sorts of stuff everywhere. Uh, some affected, some not affected. It's quite a mess, isn't it? But it's quite fun. And then we get to the reverb page. And the reverb page consists of an on-off, which is currently off. And now it's on. Then we have a pre-delay. I really like that reverb. It's really rich. And how far does it go? I've taken it up to seven milliseconds. Seven... Seven seconds, sorry. It was in, it's in milliseconds, so it confused me. So, okay, so that's seven whole seconds of reverb. And we can... Taking it down to 556 milliseconds. Uh, wait, it's, why is it saying that? Oh, it's in milliseconds. Okay, so 556 milliseconds. Yeah. It's quite fun. Then you have a low shelf. So we take the hi-hat out of it, or add it lots in, so it's, um, it's like a dB thing. So the low shelf is like minus 28 now. There's a damping. Taking the damping, it's now 10, 10K. Now it's down to 6K. Width, so you can have a mono reverb if you want. Then sped it out again. And then read, oh, the return. So that's the, how loud the reverb is coming in, which can go all the way up to 24 dB, which is kind of loud, so be careful. I've got it down at 15.9 at the minute. So I want it to turn the uh, decay up again, just for fun. Oh, and there's a pre-delay as well. I forgot to talk about that. So now it's at 250 milliseconds. Nice, uh, long there. <laughs> so let's reset the kit to default so you can hear it again. That's the default. So that's kit one. Let's move on to kit number two. And there's a lot to talk about here. This is the Creative Toolbox drums. And I absolutely love 
this snare. Anyone who knows me at all will know that I just love kind of piccolo and funk snares, and this has just got my name all over it. So let's talk about the mapping here, because there are key switches now below the octave. So if you're an S61 owner, or a 61 key owner in general, then the key switches uh, start at the C below uh, your bass drum, and they go right up to the B, or the A actually, below your first bass drum. There's double bass drums on this kit, on the C and B, very useful. So that's where we start. So B and C, double bass drums, rim shot here, or side stick as some call it, no problem. D snare, E flat, harder snare. E is a snare bounce, quite nice. Toms on F, G and A. I'll come back across to the hi-hats on the F sharp. And then middle, slightly more open hi-hat there on the A flat open on the B flat and then we have on the B like a pedal open very quickly pedal closed first crash on the on the usual place that the GM crashes on the e, on the C sharp and crash with the mute ride now ride symbol uh, middle and then the bell very nice another crash which actually is uh, another version of the e, of the C sharp crash is now F sharp uh, ride uh, crash bell, I think, sort of. Now ride again. Another crash. Actually, I, um, it's it's yeah, it's crash ride, I think. And then mute. And we're up to B here. So this goes a little differently than the GM spec, but it's very nice nonetheless. So you can do all sorts of cool beats on this. And I'll then talk about the mapping and the pages and everything. And there's quite a bit to talk about in this one because this is kind of, I guess, the the meat and potato of this library, which I really really enjoy a lot. So I'll just play a couple beats for you in the current configuration. Oh, like you could use the other ride if you want. Yes, anyone who knows me, I like this. Oh, I didn't show you the side stick as well. Just so tasty. Stress, I've got that right. They got. They, they just made this personally for me, you know. It was just me. I love it. <laughs> it's got my name all over it, this library, this kit. Right, so let's talk about the end case mappings before we come back and do the key switches. So the first null that we get to is the stick switch, stick switch, and it's currently set to sticks. And if I turn it to the right slightly, then we come onto brushes. And so now all the items are now played with brushes. So you can do all sorts of your jazz stuff if you want. Here's the symbols all sounding all brushy and nice. So this is good for ballads. Or you can kind of, or change it up here if you want to use the ride for the jazz instead. Or that one, or this one. So the choice is good, all right? So that's brushes. Then move on to rods. And again, the hi-hats and everything, all the toms, they've done a good job because sometimes what you find with some libraries is that the snare is the only thing that changes and people forget to re-record all the toms and things and I just find that very annoying so you can hear that snare is definitely different than it was when we first started the toms are different too because they're rotted and the hi-hats particularly that open hi-hat is really really indicative of being hit with a rod and I appreciate that they've put the uh, the work into that I would call it painting the back side of the fence if you like and all the symbols and everything all match up really tasteful all right and there's also another snare the snare number two I've now changed that and I'll put it back to sticks and you can hear this snare And 
there's the sticks again, brushes. And then rose. So let's go back to the initial. There we go, in the brushes. And so with the sticks and the brushes, just the same on the other snare, the E is a stick bounce. And on the brushes, it's like a nice brush bounce, which I like. On the rods, there's nothing because rods don't really do that. So that's understandable. So let's go back to snare one because I want to talk about one other thing here. So knob one and two is to do with the uh, sticks first and then snare. Knob three is empty and knob four is the snare spring. And you can have it open or closed so you can. And that's with it open. So it's quite a different sound. And just close the snare spring again, just to remind you. And I'll do it while playing. All right, so we'll go back and go back through brushes again. There we go. And then snare spring again. It's open now. So it's again open with brushes, open with sticks. That's closed with brushes. And then we'll go back to rods. And open with rods. And now we've got to do it all over again, but this time with snare two. So I'll reset everything. And snare. Two. There we go. So, just to remind you. And then we move on to brushes. Come on, change. Open snare. And rods. Open. So you see, there's a lot of customizability here. Um, I don't know how many combinations that is, but I know it's a lot. And you can do all of that same stuff with key switches. So let me try and reset this to the way it should be and see if we can get this right, because there's a lot to think about. So we have sticks, snare one, and spring closed, all right? So that, there we go. So if I hit the bottom C, that's uh, where that should be, that's normal. All the key switches, by the way, on the white keys. So that would be, I'm just checking, that's brushes on snare one closed, and then E is rods, all right? And then F would be the choice between snare one and snare two. Yes, I'm right. So now we're on snare two with, oh, this is really complicated with rods, okay. And if I press bottom C, then now it's, as you hear on snare two, and then, so F is snare one, G is snare two, and A is the snare open close option, snare spring open close. So those are the key switches. So let's just have a quick reminder because it's very complicated. C, um, oh yeah, we're not hearing anything because it sticks. Okay, so sticks on C, brushes on D, rods on E, that's snare one on F, snare two on G, and open close snare on A, and it's a toggle, bounces between the two. So if you don't want to automate your parameter changes, you can have a blank bar with all your key presses at the beginning. So you might want to have, let's say, how can I do this? All right, I want that sound. So let's, okay, so that's A, which is currently, snare spring open and f is snare one yeah there we go 
So that would be FA at the beginning of your piece, and you're good to go then. Oh, wait. It's DFA, really, because you want brushes, and you want snare one, and you want the snare spring open. Snare spring open, snare spring open. That's hard to say, you know. It's snare spring, snare spring. Spring snare, snare spring. Okay. Try saying that when you've had a lot to drink. I haven't, by the way. I mean, only orange juice, but that's okay. So, yeah, those are the things. So let's see. How can I reset this to normal? From key switches only. I've done it from the controls. All right, that goes there. That goes there. Um, and we're good. All right. We've gotten through the first page of parameters. I told you this kit was the biggest one. I absolutely love it. So, page two, kick. Just like on the previous electronic kit. Um, then we have pitch. So you can have a nice punchy kit. Even taking it up by 3.72 semitones, for example. It's quite nice. It's really punchy. And then, so that's knob one and knob two. Three is empty. Four is empty. Five is the overhead send. Because now there's actually mics in here, which goes up to 12.9 dB. Sorry, 12.0 dB. All the way down. So the main kick is, I guess, like a main mix. Uh, and that's the first volume, because you can turn that all the way down, by the way. Turning that kick all the way down. I believe you can still hear it. That is because there's a, a room kick uh, mic as well. I'm turning up to 12 dB. I'll take that all the way down. Now, there's nothing going. And let's turn the kick up to the overheads to 12. Sounds ridiculous, right? So we turn the volume up. All right, it's currently 4.1 dB. I'm going to be careful with that because I don't want it to clip anything or do anything naughty. Taking the uh, send down, all the sends. So now it's just um, direct kick mic. Ah, oh, I forgot. I did stick a limiter and a compressor on the final stage. So if I want to crank this, I can. Ha <laughs> ha. Nothing's going to get me. So yeah, now the kick is at plus 12. If it wasn't, it would clip and be very, very bad. So why don't we make a ridiculous sounding kit and then we'll fix it later. So let's pan, put the pitch down there. I'll set that to there. And I'll turn up the rim send all the way to the maximum. And then we'll go to the next page where the snare is. And again, there's a volume for that. So I'm turning down the snare volume, just the same as the other one. We'll have um, no room send. We'll just have um, overhead send. All right. This is the way you can customize yourself for absolutely no reason, but you can. But there is something else here on the snare page. There is a snare up. Now, I wonder if that is just related. Yes, it is. So the snare up is only related to the first parameter, which is volume. So snare up is on knob three here. If I turn the room all the way down, uh, sorry, the overhead all the way down, which it now is, then you're only hearing snare bottom. And then if I turn the snare up, snare top up. So you can have a really nice customizability here. I do like that. So anyway, I was going to turn this up. We're going to make a really stupid sounding kit here. All right. Oh, there is a snare down too. I didn't see that. Okay. So that's how they've mapped this. There's a lot going on. I like it. All right. Anyway. We're not finished with our stupid kit yet. We have to make a really stupid kit. So let's pitch that, which is the low tom. So uh, knob one, of course, is volume, as it is on all of these pages. But we've got LT, MT, and HT. So now we've got the low tom higher than the middle tom, which is going down. And the, the high tom is going very high. So now we have from left to right, which is absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to play that. Just for the sake of doing it. No reason to do that at all. I'm going to reset it soon, don't you worry. But yes, and these, this actually, there's a pan. We can pan it all the way over there. And, oh, there's a pan. But of course, the pan only works. The pan only seems to work when 
um, the volume is being used, the main volume. So does that mean it works on the kick? Because I'm using that. Yeah, so we can stick the kick all the way over there. The pan is on the very last knob. It's slightly different mapping than the electronic section, so it's a bit different. So there's a reason why you might want these silly things. You're thinking, why is he doing that? Well, it's because all music is different. And if you're making something weird and avant-garde, then you know you might well want. Drummers to print there they're not doing. So you can have. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That's the thing about music, you know? You can do what you like with it. So we've done toms, then there's hi-hat. Pitch is currently taking up there. We'll turn the volume up. It's 9 dB. And then you have the standard affair on this, the overhead send and room send, reverb send and pan. Because there's no point having sort of top and bottom of the hi-hat, so they didn't. Okay, then we have the overhead itself, which we've talked about. And when I turn it down, the snare goes away, because of course the snare is going through it particularly. Then you have the crash volumes. And because the crashes don't need their own pages necessarily, they can fill up a page of knobs on the overhead send, uh, overhead page, so they've done that here. So that's turning up and down the first crash. And then crash two volume, turning up and down, and the ride volume, there we go. And then, what's that, the end, are the reverse send and the pan. You can actually pan the overheads if you want. So you can pan the overheads all the way over there. Again, crazy music if you want. Then the room and the same again. So room volume, r crash one volume, crash two volume, ride volume, nothing for a couple of controls, and then reverse, uh, reverb send, I did it again, and pan. And then the reverb itself, which is currently off. It's now on. Pre-delay again. And decay, currently 3.8 milliseconds, and now it's seven again. Decay, we talked about that. Low shelf, and damping, and width, and return. And that's the end of that. And so that's the end of that. I'm gonna reset the kit now, just by double loading the kit. And look, our normal, nice, friendly kit has returned. So normal silliness. And um, what can I play? How about one of these? very tasty this kit. I really 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 rate it highly. All right the last one in the series is a percussion section with a lot of stuff going on and so I'm going to downshift my keyboard one more time because uh, the left hand of my keyboard is out of frame if I don't. So I am now technically down at octave minus two on an S61 so that the first um, or the second octave C really is the first of these percussions. Um, so what we have we have bongos one and the nks mapping here again is really excellent um each nearly all of the kit pieces are mapped to their own individual pages there's a couple of places where they're not but it's not the end of the world so we have bongos one and they've got like a, a sort of um what do you call it they've got a method for the keys here and it's in the manual as well and i did read it before coming and doing this video but i've kind of forgotten the exact wording but each key has its place, and so when you find that there are what you think might be missing keys in a couple of these sounds, as you'll find out later, they're not missing. They're just, they're in the right places. So for example, if I play C, and then C sharp here, and then D, and then E flat, and then E, there's that, and then it goes to F, F sharp, G, A flat, A. And that's the same, isn't it? So that meant if I played a phrase, I'm doing C, D, C, C sharp, C, D, C, E. And if I were to transpose that, say I recorded it, if I transposed it up by one, two, three, four, five, it would land on the F. And then we have. So it's the same across the keyboard. And I like that. They've picked a nice uniform thing instead of just slapping stuff willy nilly all over the place. So you can.
I like it. If you hit the E and then the C at just the right time and at the right velocity. Very nice. And then we move on and these those things are together. Then you have a gap. There's a couple of notes here of gap. Then you've got a, a, a C and then it repeats in this time. So that was bongos one and bongos two. Now we have conga one and conga two for the mapping. And I'll come back to the mapping in a second. I'm just gonna show you all the kit pieces. Same again. So if we, if we mirror the octave below, I'll play them together. Look, it's the same thing. So if you wanted your passage played on congas to start, uh, bongas to start with, you want to move up to uh, congas. Then you can, you just transpose it and it will all move very, very nicely into place. I've seen a couple other libraries do this and I really approve. Well, I said I was gonna talk about the mapping separately, but why do that? So let's see, if we take conga one as an example, what's the first thing? We have 0.0, .0 dB volume, pitch, and nothing for uh, the next couple of knobs, and then pan center and room send, reverb send, and those are each. And that's the same on each of these pages as far as I remember. Um, if there's anything that is different, I will find it as we go along. I'm just going to check on the bongos one, and yeah, they're all the same for those. So we move up now to the cajon, and I've reset my keyboard, so if it looks like I'm playing in the same place, I am. But it's just because it's easier to play where I'm closer to the mic and closer to you. Okay. See again, that same kind of methodology here. Let me downshift so you can... We'll mirror the the um the second bong, uh, conga patch here. Oh no, this is the first first conga patch. That's the second. That one's on the left. That one's. Oh no, wait. Yeah, it's weird because actually the one that's on the left of the keyboard is on the right of the stereo spectrum, and the one that's on the right, which is on the F, is on the left. So I have to think about that. So we'll do C C, C sharp C sharp, D D, E flat E flat, and E E. And see, the, the cajon also mirrors the bongos and congos that we've already heard. Super cool, very thoughtful. All right. Then we have this uh, little rototom thing. And there's n this is where we talk about where there's some things that you might be thinking are missing. There's just, there was no reason to put them in, so they didn't. So for example, where the F is, there's no, um, there's no C-sharp equivalent for this, you see? So on the C-sharp, it's just blank. D is the edge. And then there's a flam there on the on the A flat, and a roll kind of a dig dig da. I don't know what you call that actually. There's probably a name for dig dig da, but we'll just go with dig dig da on the A. But there's no sort of other thing here. Maybe because roll roller toms can't do that, but you can still use it just fine. So now this is one that has even fewer things. The castanet here on C. There's nothing on C sharp. Nothing on D. But there's something on E flat which makes sense because it's the flam and a little chicka chick on the E, a chicka chick. All right, and then move on to the F. What have we got here? I need to go, I. Oh, it's guaro, okay. So on the F, they have that, the default one. There's always that, I think. Nothing on the F sharp. Mm, scrape on the G, A flat, nothing. A, another scrape, and that's it. And move the keyboard down again. All right, we have a kibasa. This one is the most empty one I think there is. Actually, I think there's another one, wind chimes at the top. The kibasa just has a C to speak for itself. It's very lonely, just only one key. That's it. All right, we go on to the first of two lovely sounding shakers. I love these shakers because they can be played together in harmony. I'll show you in a second. So F, F sharp, G, A flat. They get longer and longer, these shakes, and A. This one's really long. like a rattlesnake in the grass. And then the blank on the B and B flat. And C, shake it to C sharp. So you've got the up and down shakes. D, E flat. And E, which is really long. Cool, huh? So with these, you can do all kinds of fun shakery, shakery things by, I can't do that. Shake the two together. It's easier if you program it, but you can. Yeah. 
really nice shakers, like I say. All right, moving up. That's um, moving to the um, relevant page. So I know the name is the Agogo. I love that they've put the pages for these things in order, by the way. I do appreciate that a great deal. All right, that's just one of those. That's it. The F is all you get. No F sharp, G, A flat, A, nothing like that. Empty until we get to the C. We have a cowbell. Needs more cowbell. Well, you've got cowbell here. Nothing on the C sharp, though. So you've just got the D and the E. And you have a nice E flat flam. And you have a digger da again on the E. Digger da, I like that. Digger da, digger da, C. Digger da, digger da. Can you say that? Digger da, it's quite difficult. Then we have a clave. And there's no other thing to do with the clave except clave. It so it's just F. That's it. That's all you get. You want anything else? Too bad. Okay, we get to the C. Wind chime. Mm. Who doesn't like a wind chime? Well, it's just called chime, really. But yeah, chime. And since that's the end of the mapping, I was wrong about the pages. I must have been thinking about the um, electronic kit. Yes, I was. They mapped everything through all the pages as they should, and that's good. All right, then we get to the room page. Uh, you know what that's going to do, don't you? So I won't show you that, but I'll turn the reverb back on because I want to see if I can turn the decay up on the reverb. And then I want to turn up the mix a little bit and then hit the wind chime and just have it just go. For no other reason than I just wanted to hear that, just because it's so nice. I'm just checking. I don't think there's another key in the chimes. Yep, there's no D uh, or C sharp or E or E flat or anything like that. So that's the end of it, you see? That's the end of the whole thing. Let's just hear that chime one more time. Ah, isn't that pretty? Okay, it's over the top, I know, but it's still fun. So there is a quick, very sort of quick and fast look at Strezoff Sampling, the creative toolbox. I hope that it will inspire you to make all sorts of fun and funky things or slow and ballady things or whatever it is you want to make. Thank you for watching this video. Go download it now while you can.